we are here and looking forward to going through so much with you today. So yeah. lots of fun. Let us know if you're here. Um, we're answering questions, general questions that we haven't covered earlier in, in the previous, year. Yes. And, um, but we're going to talk also about our 2023 mystery model. A little bit mystery. about 2023 plans. Yes. Um, and then we're going to uh, do our last um, palette of the month. It's been a fun year. Do you uh, want to start with that? No, you can. I was just going to say that the palette of the month, a lot of people have asked us, are we going to be doing this in 2023? And it's actually, that was a 2022 thing. So we've got the last palette of the month right now. We have different plans for 2023, but we still have some inventory uh, for this year. Once it's gone, once those palettes of the month are gone, we will probably let those go. Is that the plan? Or? I thought we were going to keep them in stock for oh, a while, but okay. I think we'll have to sort <laughs> we'll of see. see. We'll play because, by you know, the issue is that um, fabric lines, uh, dye lots, colors, everything changes over time. So Even with solids. Yeah, even with solids. So we'll sort of, it's kind of right. sort of depends we, on we how we can at least, go. Shall we show Decembers? Yes, show okay. Decembers. So. I will start just with beautiful colors and then you can explain. So one of our most, I, I would say the most requested palette we get is the one that was on the cover of our Quilts Made Modern book. Wow, that's 12 years now, yeah, something like that. And every people, we had, we sold kits for many years, mm -hmm. um, but we decided to uh, retire the kit we still got lots of requests for, for it. a quilt called beach glass yeah and so this does this is not the exact palette the exact palette had if you wanted to build on this to um get closer to the original beach glass palette this is a great start the um the superior solids vanilla would be a good option and yeah. some of the grays but we didn't want you know we're trying not to replicate too many of the same fabrics in earlier bundles because there are people who buy every bundle. But the idea was that this would at least capture, and look what we're wearing, yeah. of course. <laughs> we, we, we did not plan it. No, we didn't. <laughs> but um, the, we wanted to capture that beautiful softness yet clarity that you find beach combing with, with the sea glass that washes up. And if, if you've ever collected it, you see that there those kind of purples, greens, soft blues. The deeper blues are kind of one of those rarities, much sought after by beach combers. But what makes the palette, I think, so interesting is there is, there's a real depth of light to medium. You can even go a little darker if you want. And then there's a range of hues and going from kind of the, the red violets all the way to blue, and green so and kind of periwinkle in there yeah and and if you're making a quilt with this palette another thing that often makes it i think really interesting is to have some colors that are a little on the dustier side absolutely and some that are very clear so that's that's saturation a little more or a little less saturated and it's really, I, I think, an, an exciting palette to work with. What I love about all of our palettes, and, and this is, you know, it, it seems like it should be easy, like, oh, you just grab some bolts and you're done. Um, but what we've tried to do with these palettes is come up with palettes that are going to be timeless, that aren't going to look like, oh, that's so 2022, <laughs> you know, five years from now, 10 years yeah. from now. And the fact that this palette, people have been asking us for this palette for 12 oh, years. So long. Um, is um, a sign to me that this is, this is not going to be a, um, it's, it's, it's not trendy. I think, I right. think it's funny because we, we've, we're sort of like, we don't want to be trendy. We want, we want you to, have that quilt in 10 years from now for it to still feel classic and to I, you. I do weeks mentioned that it works really well with the superior solids vanilla which is a mm -hmm. very gentle off-white i'm actually going to grab that bolt okay and hold up so next they can to see it. it 
because that, that works well as a sashing or a kind of companion. Yes, and thank you. For, I'm so glad I'm seeing in the comment section people saying that it's pretty and it's one of their all-time favorites. This is why, you know, it's, it's hard because sometimes there's an expectation in December that you're going to have a holiday-themed palette. But I feel like uh, there's plenty of holiday prints that people typically want to use and that 10 solids isn't necessarily what you need. But you can see how nice this looks with the vanilla. And so. probably one of the challenges with doing things on screen is it may be hard to tell. This is a really lovely sky blue, very light. But when you put it next to the vanilla, it really, the blue comes out. If you see it in the bundle, it can almost look white. But the, the vanilla has kind of a yellow undertone that accentuates this blueness there. I think there, I hope on your screens, you can see that. But they're great. If you wanted to make that beach glass mm -hmm. quilt from Quilts Made Modern, this would be a great starting point. If I remember right, I think it uses 12 fabrics. So if you add a couple grays, light but grays honestly, in there, that would be good. Honestly, you could add 15. And it would be yeah, it, actually, it, that's a more is better one. Yeah, it, think of it as collecting beach glass. Okay, so I'm going to dive into some of the questions we've gotten in the past right. month and um, add... Feel free to add more of yours um, if you have some that uh, we haven't gotten to. And the first one was how to use stripes. And um, I think stripes is a category, um, have to be broken down. There's not like one answer for mm -hmm. that. Although I will say, I think a striped binding is always fun. It, it's one of the things that's great about stripes on bindings if you make a binding the way we do with top stitching it, if you cut it on grain, you're going to have the stripes running beautifully, perpendicularly. If you cut a bias binding, you get a great diagonal. And the fact that most people bind in a half inch finished may, means that it's, it, it's really a condiment. It just spices exactly. up that edge without overpowering the quilt. So. And that's stripes, a, and I, yeah. I'm sure a lot of you have done striped bindings, but if not, I think it's a good place to be a little daring. And I think a lot of, you know, so when you sort of break down how to use stripes, a lot of it depends on how high contrast the stripes are. If they are black and white stripes, then you're going to really need to use them in a consistent role within yes. the quilt. Um, and if they're low contrast, like a tone on tone stripe or something like that, you could really use it as any other print. But I would say, depending on how graphic and you know how bold the stripe is, you may want to use it all in the same direction. That um, unless there's you know a design reason not to, but I feel like it just calms it down a little bit. I agree, and I think. I just thought of, I, I'd like to go grab a quilt quickly with a stripe example if I can. Okay, so, but we got so, a lot of questions yeah, we have a lot, to get, so we'll we have a a lot to get through. So, yeah. okay, I'm going to go on and we can jump forward. Actually, Bill, if you see yeah. a bold proposition down there, yeah, if you could so grab that, that too. So um, we had uh, another question about our bold proposition quilt from Modern Quilts Illustrated 12. And the question was why we chose a dark fabric for the contrast fabric. I'm going to show you the detail of it here. This is a better way to see it. The um, Why did we choose the dark uh, fabric for this brown here as opposed to a light fabric? And um, the answer, I was thinking about how to explain this, and you absolutely could have. However, if you think about these fabrics, or pretty much most of K Facet Collective fabrics, they're really bright and they're very bold and you want to heighten the boldness of it as opposed to distract from it. And um, if we had used a white fabric or, um, you know, a white, let's just go with white because that's the easiest example. The white would have been so high contrast that you would have seen, it would have drawn more attention to this star form and you would see less of the fabric. 
So it's kind of like, here's an example. So if, if you were trying to, if, if you're trying to focus on the fabric and the prints, you want a fabric that's going to step back and recede a little bit. And then that fabric, that darker fabric, makes these look brighter and more luminous. Whereas this had been white, which also would have looked good, um, it would have contrasted more with the fabrics and made the fabrics um, look less bold and a little less luminous. And the kind of analogy I was thinking about was, if you're in, um, see if this makes sense to you, if you have a flashlight in, if, like right now it's noon in the middle of the day, and if I held up a flashlight right now, it would not seem that bright. If I were in a dark room and I held up a flashlight, it would look, it would look so much brighter. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what these fabrics are doing. They're, it's, it's brightness and light in, in the context of something else. So it's accentuating. So when you put it next to something that's dark, it looks brighter and bolder. And if you put it next to something that's light, it looks colorful, but it doesn't quite look... Does that make sense? Yeah, I often use the example of if, if you have stained glass windows in a church, they always have the dark metal... Um, uh, the banding that are holding the panes in and so when the light is coming through those look totally dark which makes the, the glass look more luminous and if you've ever been in kind of 1960s or 70s uh, a lot of synagogues and churches then did these more modern fused glass where mm -hmm. they were just panels of colored glass fused together without those metal strips and they're very colorful, but they don't look as luminous because you don't have the contrast of those black bands. Mm -hmm. So it's a different aesthetic. Yeah. So either one works, yeah. and um, we're not about we're not about rules. We're just but we understanding have, why things. Yeah. Work. Well, we use some of you'll see some of our like our go big quilt from rediscovering your stash. That's an example of us using it with white. Or but we also use the white in a really small amount there. It's so a it proportion It's proportion. Thing. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm going to go back very okay, quickly stripes. here with the question of stripes. This, our spirit quilt that um, was made with our holiday line, from a distance, it's just going to read as blues and reds. The reason I wanted to bring it up close is to talk about the issue of, like, if you look at this red stripe, people are often nervous about the fact that stripes might go a little crooked on you. And it's an individual choice. We're often asked, do you straighten it out and fussy cut to get your stripes perfectly parallel? There are going to be some people who want to do that with every piece. Go for it. It depends how, how high contrast how high it is, contrast. though, and the scale of the stripe. Because if I look up close at this blue, if you look at That's the right. bottom stripe, you'll see that it actually is ever so slightly crooked, quote unquote. But, but you have to be looking but, at it like all the time from this distance. I, I don't know? mind also. Yeah. It's like, it's, I'm acknowledging that it's fabric and fabric right. moves and bends. Now, some people want to go intentionally very yeah. askew with, with the stripe. It's just a choice. It's a, it's a, it's a personal preference. I it's think not... what you don't want to do is you don't want to fussy cut 99 pieces and then have one that's crooked. Yeah, just it's make it look consistent intentional. and intentional. Yeah. Okay. So this next question, I, right. I think this is, I'm going to be so interested to see people's reaction to this question. And I haven't talked to you about okay, this, this question. Is... So I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Okay. So the question is, this quilter is doing a sampler quilt and she has a, uh, it's in a grid, four blocks by five blocks. Okay. And she wants to know, there are some blocks in there she's not very fond of, and she wants to know where to place them. So, and I actually wrote down the exact wording because I love this so much. The blocks that you're not crazy about and where do you place them to let the eye float over them. Okay, so I burst out <laughs> laughing when I saw this question because I'm like, it's a trick question. Yes. Don't use blocks you don't like. 
I was going to say, on the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I don't mean to be flippant about yeah. but it's kind of like... If they bug you now, they're going to bug you later. Oh, they're going to bug you even more Forever. once they're quilted. Because once they're quilted, you're like, oh, Why shit. Did they do Why did they deal I... with that earlier? Yeah, okay. So, you officially have encouragement, I'm going to speak for you, to adapt people's patterns. And if there's a block you're not crazy about, mm -hmm. out of there. Because right. it's never, it's not going to age well. It's like... Well, I, I, I didn't even push it further and say like, use it as an opportunity to identify why it bothers you. Don't yeah. just say it bothers right. me. I, I always tell my design students, I, I never want you to say I like it or I don't like it without adding why afterwards. Because if you don't add that why, you can make the same mistake over and over. Like, no, but I think for me, it was kind of like... Don't use it. Yeah, and and this is where you we need to all of us and because <clears throat> we've been ripping out, um, or I well I guess we've been we've been ripping out some <laughs> stitching on a quilt that I started quilting. Wait, 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 I need to back up. We've been ripping out quilting, not quilting. not just stitching. We've never done this before. Yeah, we're taking out but really it dense was like machine. We quilting. were in a hurry. We made a decision without thinking it through. It yeah. didn't, you know, it's kind of like, sometimes you just want to be done. Okay, wait, wait, I have, I have to keep going <laughs> back. I have to keep going done. back. This is something we did a couple years ago. Oh, years ago. We set it aside thinking. Pre-COVID. We're going to come back to it and it'll be okay. No, it was worse. It, like, it bothered yeah. us even more. Yeah. And we're like, is And we this were actually thinking, like, do we cut the quilt? I mean, do we like. Because this is easily six or eight hours of tearing out oh, quilt, Ripping so out painful. quilting. But what, what happened is we talked about it a lot and we realized we actually like the quilt a whole lot. Yeah. And of course, the fabrics aren't available anymore. Yeah. So we couldn't remake it. And we thought, yeah, it's it's worth, I say it's worth it because she's doing most of it. <laughs> but, um, uh, you can't see in front of us, but we have one, two, three, four different seam rippers on this table because we've been seeing like which one is most effective. And what I've determined is the most effective one is the one that she's using. Yeah. <laughs> so no, so uh, Lisa says she's unsewing a quilt you right are? now. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it happens to the best of so, us. So when you have those blocks that bother you, I, I, the only time I could slightly disagree, Weeks said that the arrangement was four blocks by five blocks in a grid. That's very few. I mean, 20 blocks, you're going to notice them. If you had a quilt with 200 blocks, they may not be as big a deal, but with 20, it's going to bother you. So but see, I, it kind of brings up, it kind of reminds me of the broken window theory. You know, I don't know if you know this uh, behavior, well, psychology, where yeah. if you have a block and there's a house with a window or a building with a window and the window stays broken for more than a year, other windows will break. It, it's a sign of of losing dedication and interest in your, you know, your block or your community or whatever. And I think that there's, there's, you know, it's, you only like the quilt as much as your least favorite part of the quilt. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if you're if you're trying to hide blocks, in if you're trying to hide a block among twenty. Take it out and replace it with one you love. And, and again, I think Weeks' point of use it as an opportunity to adapt it, to try to think of something different. One other example is we, when we first met, we made a full-size quilt that we were hand quilting. We got a third of the way through it, got busy, set it aside, years later uncovered it, and realized that we didn't love it enough. Like 15 years 15 later. 15 years later. Yeah, it we sat didn't, there. We looked at it and we thought, wow, our craftsmanship is so much improved. This quilt has nice memories, but it's sure not worth investing hours of hand no. quilting in. And we put it on our long arm and long arm, two thirds of it. So a third is hand quilted, two thirds is densely machine quilted. And it's actually kind of a beautiful metaphor in the end. But, it, and, but, but basically it's like you're allowed to adapt. Yeah, and the thing you is, know, rather, we encourage than, you to adapt. rather than dislike aspects of it, right. we now 
embrace it as as kind of growth and yeah and it's a different quilt than we started out with be right. because of that we're get, do we need to deal with no. um okay so um okay so so the answer is um put it on the back or uh replace it but you're if you don't like it now you're not going to like it more once it's quilted um we also have had a lot of questions about international fabric sales so I'm going to just go as quickly through this as I can, just so people understand how this works. We license designs to Better Techs, and they sell them. Um, and they sell the fabric. They sell the fabric around the world. There are distributors in all the regions of the world where quilting fabric is sold that make the determination either themselves, whether they think it's going to sell in their market, or they hear from the shops who want to buy it, be sure to get that. And it, it's kind of a push-pull marketing situation. But we typically don't know who carries what and what's carried where. Um, and so if the best thing you can do if you want to see our, if you're an international um, customer and you want to see our fabrics in your shop is to ask the shop whether they um, will carry it, are carrying it, um, whether their distributor has it. That's the yeah. best way because we we typically don't know. The other yeah. option would be you can um, you can call Better Techs and ask them, you know, yeah. where their distributor whether their distributor but carries there, it. There, there are so many links between but us we, and we, you that we we yeah. we don't. <laughs> Actually, pretty powerless here. Yeah, no, yeah. We 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 just we just send the files and make some but, quotes. But it is very interesting when when selling internationally that uh, fabric trends do vary tremendously. We had one line that was years ago that was kind of pastel. It was very very successful here. And the British distributor said pastels don't sell in England now. Well, and, all and our yarn guys, which sold out so quickly, and then in Australia, the Australian distributor said, "Yeah, we couldn't give them away." And I was like, "What? <laughs> you know, we yeah. sold out. We well, like, send them back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we can use them." So, um, okay. The next, okay, next question. question was. Oh, I just want to quickly oh, yes. interrupt because I just read Barb's. You spent fifty hours ripping out. Oh. Quilting that is. Do you remember that we had that we had that yeah that um, student yeah who, who ripped who out a queen ripped size out a queen quilt. size but she did a king wow so I I'm glad work. it's one of your favorites and that was, was fifty hours it. well spent because you're gonna love it for a lot more than fifty hours now yeah so and you probably well spent more fifty more fifty hours getting it to that <laughs> point um, so then we had another question from somebody who said she wanted to know what our most challenging quilt was. That she's ready for a challenge and for uh, a challenging quilt. So, and I think that comes down to, and, and this is this is something where we're really different than I think a lot of the rest of the quilting world that focuses on how many hours of sewing and how teeny tiny the pieces are. Mm -hmm. That difficulty, there's two types of difficulty. There's um, precision difficulty, precision slash number of seams, how teeny tiny the pieces are, like that quilt that got the big um, ribbon at uh, quilt festival this year. Um, and then there's design difficulty. Um, and they're, they're different. They really, really different. different. And the quilt, uh, the, the shows seem to only value um, precision and length of time spent, like how teeny well, the pieces yeah. are. Weeks and I often joke that the first prize ribbon should be called "She Who Suffers the Most Wins." Or he. <laughs> or he. <laughs> that, but but it's often about just sheer number of hours and scale. Stamina. And, cra and sta stamina. <laughs> stamina. And, and that is something that I you know I can admire that, but for in terms of what our most difficult quilts are. We rarely think in terms of the technical assembly in, as being difficult. We think much more about the design that goes into it. However, we do have some that are on right. the more challenging yeah. side. I would say the number one that comes to my mind, hold on, is um, actually our lavish quilt that's on the cover here. 
this, um, I remember when I was in Houston and there would be people who would come by and say, oh, that's a stack and whack quilt. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it is so not a stack and whack quilt. But, but that's precision, but Very in, the same, precise. in the same issue. Is that what you're about to lead to for design? Um, that one? Um, you no, clearly have something you no, want No, no, no. I, we, 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 I didn't know this question, so yeah. I'm curious what you're going so to say next. The, the thing that's tricky about this, but totally doable if you follow directions, is that it's um, a series of circles that are fussy cut with a bilaterally symmetrical print. So there's just, it's kind of like a master class in precision and design. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a quilt along for it initially, um, and a lot of the fabrics are out of print, but you can make this quilt with other bilaterally symmetrical quilts. Um, I think the one Bill is also talking about in the same issue, issue 13, oh, this is 14, is our rank and file quilt, which, um, how many, 150? Fabrics. different fabrics so doing this is these are the piles of the fabrics we used so that is also part of what i would consider difficulty because you you have to develop your eye to make, to, to make that a work. good ombre and um and so ombres are very difficult when they're multi-hue it's easy to do a fade from light blue to dark blue, but to do a fade from light to dark where you have blues, reds, pinks, yellows um, is much more challenging. So, yeah, for me, the design work and the thinking that goes into the planning, that goes into a quilt like this is, f for me, a wonderful challenge. I actually yeah. enjoy that more than the painstaking craftsmanship. Of... I don't enjoy the little, the, the blocks next to the quarter. Uh, that, that, that is, a, it's, a different it's kind not of for me, but if people love that, you know, do it. Our spellbound quilt from issue 11. So let me get this a little bit closer so you can see that. Um, I posted this on social media for the first time in a long time. And a lot of people were, spellbound mm -hmm. by it. So yeah. this also involves cutting precisely and aligning prints, but it doesn't have curves in it. So that's a little bit easier, but it's got some really big templates in there. And we actually, this was so cool, Bill did a little coloring, um, a coloring block so you can plan out your quilting or your, uh, your color work, I guess, for it. And, um, and so this is all in issue 11, I, so, I would say. And the question of, do we have a favorite among our designs? I, I wonder what weeks will say to that. I, I will say that one of the challenges we have, a couple of my favorite designs are ones that we've never done patterns for, that we've done either as commissions or for ourselves and have a certain level of complexity or uniqueness that that we haven't shown them because people will ask for a pattern and there is no pattern. And we, we, tell, we, we or, tell them like, you will hate us. Yeah, you will hate us. That, that's us. true. I, I have a very small quilt that I love. I, we've never actually hung it, but once I was going away to teach and Weeks surprised me with a, a gift of a, a stack of beautiful hand-dyed fabrics. You're to, going to the Grand, the, uh, Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island. <laughs> And this was, I was actually going to Des Moines for oh, this. And, oh, that's right, that's right. And I was actually, it was kind of a retreat teaching thing. And she gave me a beautiful stack of fabric to work with. And I made something that week that I actually really love. But again, it's lots of eighths and sixteenth inch measurements that, that, really people would hate if we, yeah. and, and, and yet I realized that if we made a pattern and simplified the units, it wouldn't have the same beauty. It's all about yeah. proportion. So, so I, I hate to be evasive here, but yeah, I would say lavish. Um, the one I just showed you is one of my favorites just because I think it, it's such a, um, you get lost in it and mm -hmm. it's such a, it's, it's such a fun 
um, to just be enveloped in all that pattern. Um, but actually, if you can hand me um, that, one of my favorites though is is actually no this oh. this the the one that's on the cover the billiards quilt yes, that's on the I like cover of issue too. thirteen, which is actually a fairly simple in terms of construction. The pieces are chunky, but I I just love the geometry and the fact that it's if I remember right, it's only five fabrics, and they're. And it, it was really enjoyable to make. I found it extremely relaxing. So that fat, that quilt and this quilt were combined together on a Japanese postage stamp. Oh, they're two separate stamps. No, or they were one stamp? it's one stamp, oh. but they sort of collaged them. And it was the motif in 2019 for that big show. Yeah, it was a commemorative stamp yeah. done for a show we had in Japan. I forgot so that, that they were both on there. I would say seeing... Um, seeing quilt on a postage stamp that was kind that's of cool. kind of a career high um okay so uh then there's a question about considerations for backing um i like to have the backing be a pleasant surprise or have it just kind of disappear if you're trying to make it to, kind of depends on the vibe of the quilt if you're going for if it's like lavish or something mm. like that that's a big you know, gregarious uh, collection of prints. I feel like it has to have a print on the back. Whereas um, well, the uh, rank and file with all the solids, I would put a solid I, on the back. So I think it, for me, it depends a lot on how it's being used because that's true. If it's a bed <clears throat> quilt, and this this matters if if we're doing a quilt as a commission or a gift, some people always turn down the quilt. And so you know that, that a foot of that will be showing. Other people cover the pillows and don't turn it down. Then if it's a napping quilt, is are you gonna be curled up with it and constantly be seeing the back in conjunction mm -hmm. with the front? I, or is I it think, a, wall quilt, a wall hanging? Or is it a wall hanging? And so the number of considerations is pretty big. I, I think a lot of people think of, uh, Another big consideration is just financial. If you have fabric that is in your stash that you want to use up, it can, and it you know works with the front. Absolutely. You might actually just feel great using things up. Right. And or I, piecing. I wouldn't use, I think a common mistake though is to use a fabric you don't love on the back because you just want to use it up and then feel bad because it doesn't you don't like it every time you see it but if you can use fabric you like from your stash in a piece back and I think that's a great great way to go yeah and, and as we have if we've mentioned before if there's a quilt that you don't like that's in your you know you bought it because it's on, on sale or whatever a fabric. a fabric um I would encourage you to put it in a box um Put a date on it and see whether it feels better to not look at that fabric because and if so give it away yeah we sometimes um we can have associations with things that make us feel bad that we bought it or make us feel bad about sometimes we just have negative associations with certain material things mm -hmm. and it's good to not have those in our lives i and and i'm actually listening to her and trying to take that same advice i have a piece of fabric on my desk that i've been thinking about using for a long long time and it, it makes me think why haven't i used this do i need to let this go there's something about it that appeals so yeah so are there any <laughs> big no-nos when planning a project I think that the biggest no-no I would have for planning a project is um, to, to make sure that you have the uh, time, money, and interest to complete it. Um, because a lot of... The, UFOs weigh heavily on people, mm -hmm. and um, I think that it's there are there's a, an argument to be made. I think with knitting, it's the same way to have some quick and easy um, 
you know, quilts to, that, that you can get done and feel good about finishing and have some that are more ambitious. Percolate. Yeah, or that maybe you want to learn something from, I, but. Yeah, I, I'd say for me, the big no-no that is, is rushing into a quilt because I'm thinking about one that we're making right now for an upcoming publication that we designed, picked the fabrics, literally had the pattern completely written and something came up and it little, it got put off for a month and we came back to it. We're like, well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we, we actually used the different. same idea, the same fabrics, exact same fabrics and basically changed a lot of proportion things. And it's a million times better. Same thing. This yeah. quilt that I love now, the original design I did eight years before but it was too complex and it took a long time of just staring at it and then advice from weeks to simplify it, then it became something I love. So I think for me, impulse control is a big, big issue in my life. I yeah. always want to make things and do things, but I think stepping back um, is, is probably the biggest no-no for me has been rushing. I, I almost always regret rushing into a design without stepping back first. Okay, so we're going to conclude the questions oh, okay. and move to the Modern Mystery 2023 oh. kind of sneak, um, sneak, it's not a peek because we're not we're showing not anything. anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we're going to tell you, we're going to tell you what, what, how this is going to work so you can think about whether you want to participate. So, Quick background, um, about nine years ago, I want to say, when we were trying to work with uh, the American Quilter Society, who had no modern quilt categories in their shows, and they didn't, no modern quilts appeared Very in their publications. It was, it was art quilts, a lot of art quilts and traditional quilts. And we were working with them to try to introduce their members to modern quilting and the sort of concepts behind modern quilting. So we did a uh, quilt along on their website mm -hmm. that was called the Modern Mystery Quilt. And there were like 1,200 people, I think, at one time on that quilt along. It lasted Very for international. like six weeks. And um, we, through their portal on their website, we would upload directions once a week and people would share and we asked people not to post on social media to give it away to maintain the mystery yeah and um and then that concluded but there were still people who would hear about it and wanted the pattern so we yeah. have maintained we've had that pattern available as right. a mystery quilt right for years on our site um and usually what happens is like guilds or mm -hmm. clubs or you know shops We'll decide to buy mm -hmm. 20 of them and then mm -hmm. move on. So what we've decided to do is to um, retire that pattern at the end of this year um, and come up with a different model that's going to work better for us and for you and um, we think it's going to be a lot of fun. And we, we, <clears throat> I want to say this is coming from someone who was always very reticent to do a mystery quilt because I, I think when I don't have much time, I kind of want to know what I'm doing. So trust us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, are, we have thought very carefully about developing a quilt that will allow you to feel successful, to make a quilt that you really like. Um, so that's, that's, I just wanna say that's a real goal. And I will also say um, that Part of our goal is making this affordable to you and designing a pattern that you can work from your stash or you can buy new fabrics. But, um, you know, the we we don't do the two and three hundred dollar kits. That's and just the, not the world um, of mystery quilts is full of very, very expensive investments. And that's yeah. just not who in the block. Like, of months, sure, I'd love that income, but that's not yeah. that's just not who we are as yeah. quilters. We, we want it to be accessible. So yeah, there'll be a very affordable pattern that if you have a decent stash, you can probably make it if you need an excuse to go get other fabrics. <laughs> it'll be a good one. So here's how it's going to work. Um, 
the pattern, the, the, the mystery is going to be um, to start with uh, the, the pattern require the fabric requirements and the first step of six will be um, available on our website on New Year's Eve. Um, so January one, and we'll be putting this all out on social yeah. media. And we'll be we'll and there'll be a calendar that explains that it's going to be weekly for six a, weeks. A schedule, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, that it's going to be digital. So those of you in um, uh, the um, uh, international markets will be able to download it at the same yeah. time. As... With the one exception, we still can't do downloads to the UK, UK because of the laws, the so trade laws the there. The trade laws are tricky, but everywhere else you can do a digital download of this. We're so, going to keep it digital. So Karen's asking, was that published mystery quilt, the one with the half circles? Yes. Yeah, let's not discuss. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's not discuss um, what that was because there are lots of people who are still ordering it, but, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yes. That I think that I think we're talking about the same one. So, um, so the pattern is going to be available in weekly downloads, um, it's starting on New Year's Eve, and then you'll have until January thirteenth. We're going to do it on to, Fridays, to so you'll be able to have almost two weeks to get your fabrics and do the first step. Um, and we will, uh, like I said, have all of this organized. This will be part of the, um, the rollout of this, but I just wanted to tell you about this so you can just kind of see whether you want to and have the room to start um, a project to do with us because it's going to be killer, this pattern. I'm so excited about it. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, we are also going to do pre-recorded YouTube tips to help you learn some new um, techniques to, if they're new to you. So techniques if or design thinking. So exactly. with each installment, there will be a, a brief YouTube video that doesn't, it's not giving you the pattern. It's just giving you, you, you will have the pattern that you download. It will just give you additional tips to, to make and make it fun. And the, the whole thing is going to be $25. So this is very affordable. And um, as we said, we'll explain the fabric requirements um, so you can work from your stash or you can buy new fabrics. But um, we're going to, we want everybody who wants to make it to be able to do it easily and from fabric they have if they want to. Um, once we're going to ask if you're involved in yeah. this, that you not post your progress on social media until um, we're, we decide we're going to have like a an unveiling, an un, a kind of post-it date where everybody on March 1st can post their final one. So to your question, Karen, yeah, that's exactly. We will keep till March 1st, no yes. sharing. Well, then, well, we, we said we, we were going to allow people to share on the Modern Quilt Studio Fabrics and Patterns page of Facebook for people who want, you know, just to say there will be a spoiler alert there if people well, want to, then that... You don't want to do that? I, uh, oh, I thought I we think, decided. No, we I think that. we decided something different. Okay, well, okay, well, okay. Then but basically, maybe not. we're we're going to keep that shrouded in mystery until a certain date. After that, um, so oh, I, I see. So, Karen, you're asking since we retired the previous one. Actually, there are a bunch of people we, still making it. We're going to retire it at the end of the year. So. Uh, and it's going to be very, very different. So even if you saw that, it wouldn't give you any idea of what the next oh, one is. Oh, it's unrelated. They're unrelated. Totally unrelated. But um, we, we, um, a lot of people have just this month, I guess because I posted it on social media, have just purchased the original Modern Mystery Quilt. So, um, you know, as soon as we sell out the ones we have, we're just going to retire it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, it's totally unrelated to this one. And that question, Karen, will there be different size options? Right now, our intention is to have one, kind of our standard napping 
which is roughly four feet by six feet ish. We're, we're still tweaking the details. Um, we usually pick that size because it is manageable in terms of both costs. It's super useful for curling up. Um, and also it's a, a size that people who finish their own quilts on a domestic machine can quilt without having uh, too much difficulty. I think other, the other thing about it is that the design of the quilt doesn't lend itself, you know, yeah, um, this to, is to um, you variations. know, variations. So, um, but we'll put that out why, with, yeah. when we announce it, we'll have all of that information yeah. for you. So if you're away from your sewing room in February and March, um, um, the we're going to be done with it by the middle of February. So, but we won't, that, no one will be showing anything. So, if you're away, you can still absolutely yeah. do it. And it's um, January to mid February, is that <laughs> one, one of the things? Are. Yeah, it's a mystery, but honestly, I, I'd make this quilt even if it weren't a mystery. If it yeah. was just a straightforward pattern, well, I think it'll be a beautiful. And quilt. that's what happened with the, the AQS one, too. Lots of people have seen is it. That and, people have seen it, and they're like, I still want the quilt, you know, I just still want the pattern. So um, uh, we're we're going to be unveiling um, the schedule and the graphics and everything for this. I think uh, I think it will be clear what the fabric requirements are. But as I said, we're going to do some YouTube tip tutorials to help you with that. And I think one thing I can say without giving anything away is that you will be able to make this in very different fabrics. It's going to be, it's going to work as a very scrappy quilt. Mm -hmm. It will work with um, solids. It will work with prints. It will work with... And I can pretty much confidently say you've never made a quilt like this. I think that's probably safe to say. Yeah. And you've never seen so, this quilt from us before. Yeah. So, so anyway. Um, anyway. So, um, can you tell she's excited? Yeah, <laughs> because I think, you know, we've been trying to figure out how to, we had, we had 1200 people in that, um, that AQS quilt along and, you know, there was a, some people really freaked out because they had never done anything improvisational before. And they were just like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Give me precise measurements. So, and there's some people who had never done curves before. It so was, they're very different quilt. Yeah. Probably. So, um, but I think, I think that this is going to be, um, a fun event and we look forward to kicking that off with you in a month. We'll be kicking it off just a month from now. So the and, next, at the yeah. next Quilt First on January 1st, we will have released the pattern before our chat here mm -hmm. and uh, we can answer questions and um just kind of run through the details we're also really excited because we haven't made it yet like, yeah we, it, it's all ready to go but, but we, we're, we're, we, we've committed, <laughs> we've committed. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so anyway so um with that i can't believe we got through all of that lots of good yes questions. so and the uh, where did the um the bundle go oh oh the, back bundle. To the bundle so the uh the bundle beach that matches glass us. The beach glass. Yeah, we, we have um, to like pose with our beautiful bundle. <laughs> the beach glass palette of the month is um, on the website now, mm -hmm. and the Modern Mystery 2023 pattern will be on um, at 12:01 on January 1st, 12:01 a.m. January 1st, and we'll talk but next. There'll be, there'll be a lot more on social media leading yeah. up to we'll, that. We'll, we'll be giving you the whole calendar and details and that kind of thing. So. Um, we hope you have a, a restful holiday season. Or a fun holiday season. Both. Restful, restful and, well, and fun. yeah. The, ca the calendars, oh, <laughs> that, I have to laugh, um, Patty, at the. Question. <laughs> The calendar sold out in July. They're <laughs> so long gone. So but the, the annual com calendar we do is still available on calendars.com. Yeah. Um, the, our allocation usually has gone in about four days. Yeah. And I think um, we are working on a calendar for 2024. Right now. However, um, we've concluded that we're not going to be selling them ourselves next year. The... The 
and mm -hmm. unless something changes with the U.S. Postal Service, it um, we just they they damaged too many this year. Um, there, there's something about the size of calendars, yeah, and the, that the just... automated postal equipment. This year we had a lot of problems. But we're still doing the calendar. It will still be available. Yeah. Maybe not through us. Right. But we won't. We'll, we'll cross that. We'll have somebody else yeah. sell it. Um, but we're working yeah. on it right now. So right. it's, it's exciting. So have a great holiday. Um, if you have not joined the Modern Quilt Studio Fabrics and Patterns page, I hope you will. And you'll share what quilts that you've made with our patterns and our fabrics mm -hmm. um, with others. Because... You know, nice th there are see. lots of there are lots of pages that are general quilting yeah. pages, but These are spe that's specific. one specific to our patterns or our fabrics, mm -hmm. um, and it's really fun to see mm -hmm. what you um, what you make with our what we put out there. So, so thank you all. Have for a wonderful holiday. Us. Wishing you a wonderful, happy, and healthy 2023. And let's make a quilt together. Yeah. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. Okay, take, take care. care all. Bye Thanks. Bye.